After sending off the security guards, Taylor kept looking at his mobile phone. What's the matter? Why hasn't the getaway ship arrived? He walked restlessly around the riverbank and finally leaned back against the pier and smoked impatiently. Among the smog, Taylor's face was twisted and filled with a thick reluctance. He once again recalled the day's fiasco, recalling Aiden's frightening, calm face. No way. Taylor severely waved his fist and said angrily, I can't run away like this. I have to let that arrogant kid pay the price. He put out his cigarette butt on the ground, picked up his phone and began searching through his bag. Where was it? I remember the last time they gave me a business card. There it is. Tiger Mercenaries. Looking at the business card in his hand, Taylor's eyes suddenly filled with deep resentment. Aiden Dale, you have ruined my reputation and I will ensure that you suffer a fate worse than death. He picked up his mobile phone and called the contact information on the business card. In the housing district several miles away, there was an old five-story building. On the fifth floor, the landlord, who has just recently surpassed his 60th birthday, was banging hard on an apartment door. Black Dragon, Black Tiger, your rent is three months overdue, you ruffians. Pay up now. The door suddenly opened, revealing Black Tiger's grim face. Why are you knocking? Black Tiger massaged his jaw, but continued to stutter. No, I won't pay. We don't owe you a thing. Oh, you don't think you owe me? The landlord was not afraid of Black Tiger and yelled. If you don't pay the rent today, I'll call the police and send you two to prison. Black Tiger was angry, and just as the two were about to come to blows, a big hand yanked Black Tiger back to the door. Black Dragon stretched out his head and sighed at the landlord. Sir, it's not that we don't owe it, it's just that we can't currently afford it. Pointing to the bruises on himself and Black Tiger, he pleaded, All our money was spent on the treatment of these injuries. If you give us a few more days, we will have your money, please. The landlord glanced at them and found that they were indeed black and blue and in generally poor condition. He was inclined to believe Black Dragon's words. But he still snorted. You're injured because you make trouble every day. Why should I spare you for that? Hmm. I'll give you a week. If you can't pay the rent then, you'll pack up and get out of here. When the landlord went back to his office, Black Dragon sighed. I didn't expect that we wouldn't even be able to pay rent. <laughs> it's all that kid's fault. At the same time, there was a look of panic in their eyes which indicated they were recalling some extremely painful memories. Those days, as long as they closed their eyes, they would see everything that had happened to them in Diana's villa, being beaten half to death by that man. The memories would never leave. They had thought that after a rest, the swelling would gradually subside. But on the contrary, as time went on, their injuries only got worse. The two brothers had gone to a doctor, but he could not explain their injuries at all. How could they know that Aiden had ensured to cause lasting internal injury to their bodies? They couldn't. If you were not good at treating internal injuries, you couldn't deal with the injuries caused by Aiden. It was the same as when Miller had fallen into Aiden's hands for the first time. Because of these strange injuries, the brothers had spent all their money, but there still were no cures in their sights. Maybe we should see a doctor of alternative medicine. Maybe they can help us. Black Tiger finally relented. After hearing this, Black Dragon was stunned. At first, he nodded as if to agree, and he immediately shook his head and said, But I've heard that alternative doctors are all scam artists and quacks. We don't have much money left. They might not even take us. Black Tiger frowned. Then we need to go write a few more contracts? Fool! Black Dragon angrily knocked Black Tiger on the back of the head. Hey, what was that for? Idiot! You're going to look at how we're doing now and say we should try again at the same thing that got us here? Just then, Black Dragon's phone rang. Black Dragon reached for the phone and answered. He barely spoke a word, just nodded. By the time he hung up, he had a bright smile on my face. What's that happy look for? Black Dragon got close to Black Tiger and said excitedly, Here's our savior. Really? Black Tiger was also excited. What's the job? Black Dragon frowned. The client asked us to deal with a man named Aiden and said it was better to rough up his relatives first. Oh, we're going at roughing up family members. What are we waiting for? Let's go. What's the hurry? Black Dragon grabbed the impatient Black Tiger and chastised. That's why he came to us. But now the problem is, we don't know who this Aiden is or where his family is. Don't worry, I'll take care of it. 
Black Tiger patted his chest confidently. What can you do? I know a guy. He knows everything. He can help us get the information we need, but it's a little expensive. Black Dragon waved his hand and said, Our client is a top-level executive, very generous, and the reward paid should be enough for us to pay the intelligence fee. That's easy. I'll contact him right away. Under the bridge, Taylor put down his mobile phone and said grimly, Aiden Dale, you're about to taste a hundred times more pain than I ever did. Around that time, two long sirens came toward the river in the distance. Taylor looked up and saw a double-deck luxury cruise ship sailing on the river covered with rain and fog. In front of the cruise ship, a middle-aged man standing under a big umbrella waved to him. Taylor immediately stood up with a look of excitement. He waved enthusiastically. Finally, you're here! As the cruise ship got closer and closer, the face of the man under the umbrella became clearer. It was a middle-aged man with a mustache, older than Taylor. He was heavy-set and wearing a common suit. The only thing extraordinary about his looks was how unextraordinary he looked. It was Scott Flack from Grass Flower Incorporated. It was rather impressive that a mid-level manager had access to that kind of manpower.